was at the wrong place at the right time Cause suddenly there you were with those bright blue eyes We were conversing into the night sky When you took my hand said let's leave now Don't wanna be shy I will let my guard down Don't wanna be shy about everything that was on our mind talking to you gave me butterflies then you took my hand said let's leave now don't wanna be shy
So be in holy matrimony. Amen. You are all very special people because you got the invitation. And so you should probably pat yourself on the back that you are here. But today, we pray God's blessing upon them and that every part of this service will be a blessing to this couple. Amen. Officiating with me this afternoon is Pastor Winston Stevenson. And he goes way, way back with the bride. And so we are very happy to be able to work together in this beautiful ceremony. At this time, we are going to have a welcome in French by Elder Augustine, since I cannot speak in tongues. <laughs> Mesdames et messieurs, chers convives, chers parents, chers amis, Il nous fait un immense plaisir cet après-midi de vous accueillir ici pour célébrer le mariage de Sobieski et Tchad. C'est la célébration de l'amour. Cet amour qui, dans quelques instants, va être scellé à travers cette belle cérémonie devant Dieu et devant vous qui êtes ici. Au nom des deux familles, en mon nom personnel, je vous souhaite la bienvenue au mariage. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 652. There is beauty all around when there is love at home.
Let us pray. It must have been a beautiful day when you made Adam and Eve. Because here, these two people are mirroring that day and you're smiling not on us as you're smiling on them. Please, not only bless this ceremony, but bless their lives together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Kind of be seated. We will now have our scripture reading, one in English by Luke Lorenzen, and one in French by Bibiana Ducatel. Okay, we will have John Cadet reading the English. Scripture reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. I'm going to read while you listen. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought, <coughs> and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Genèse 2, verset 21 jusqu'à 24. Alors l'Éternel Dieu fit tomber un profond sommeil sur l'homme, qui s'endormit. Il prit une de ses côtes et renferma la chair à sa place. L'Éternel Dieu forma une femme de la côte qu'il avait prise de l'homme et il l'emmena vers l'homme. Et l'homme dit, « Voici cette fois celle qui est os de mes os et chair de ma chair. On l'appellera femme, parce qu'elle a été prise de l'homme. C'est pourquoi l'homme quittera son père et sa mère et s'attachera à sa femme et ils deviendront une seule chair. » Men will have a saxophone solo now by Noel Hay.
Amen. Our second We'll have our second set of scripture readings. Um, the first one will be by Nicole Lorenzen. She will be reading English. And Elder St. Pierre will read, thank you. Elder St. Pierre will read the French. So Nicole Lorenzen, she will be reading English. And Elder St. Pierre, please come forward for our second scripture reading. Our scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 7 and 13. I'll read in your hearing. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am becoming a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it protecteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity is envieth not. Charity wanteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Verse 7, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Verse 13, And now abide their faith, hope, charity, these three things, but the greatest of these is charity. Maintenant en français, quand je parlerai les langues des hommes et des anges, si je n'ai pas la charité, je suis un airain qui résonne ou une cymbale qui retentit. Et quand j'aurai le don de prophétie, la science de tous les mystères et toute la connaissance, quand j'aurai même toute la foi jusqu'à transporter des montagnes, si je n'ai pas la charité, je ne suis rien. Et quand je distribuerai tous mes biens pour la nourriture des pauvres, quand je livrerai même mon corps pour être brûlé, si je n'ai pas la charité, cela ne me sert de rien. La charité est patiente, elle est pleine de bonté. La charité n'est point envieuse, la charité ne se vante point, elle ne s'enfle point d'orgueil, elle ne fait rien de malhonnête, elle ne cherche point son intérêt, elle ne s'irrite point. Elle ne soupçonne point le mal, elle ne se réjouit point de l'injustice, mais elle se réjouit de la vérité. Elle excuse tout, elle croit tout, elle espère tout, elle supporte tout. Et le verset 13, « Maintenant, donc, ces trois choses demeurent, la foi, l'espérance, la charité. Mais la plus grande de ces choses... C'est la charité. Amen. We now have a duet as our musical selection. By Yvonne 
Ski and Annie. The prayer.
We are here the day that both of you have dreamed of and planned for is finally here. The day that your parents have dreamed of and planned for is finally here. Amen. This is my third wedding for this year, and I have one more to go. One of the interesting things about counseling couples and performing weddings is that you get to know people on a level that few other people do, because you get to ask them some very personal questions. And Chad and Sobi, we've spent hours counseling and talking together. In my experience, I have counseled couples and at the end of the first session, I've had to tell them I'm sorry but I can't continue and I won't marry you because you're not suited for one another in my estimation. You could find somebody else, but I won't. But every now and then in my ministry, I come across a couple who is so well suited for one another that a lot of the counseling session is just getting to know one another and having fun. And I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that's the case with Chad and Sobi. They are very well suited together in their temperament in their life goals, and in their spiritual commitment Amen. to one another. Amen. And so, let me just share a few ideas with you. Now, first of all, let me share a story with you. I love to tell stories. The bride was very, very nervous on her day and the days leading up to the wedding, and she just didn't know what to do. She felt that she would make a mess of everything, and so she went to her mother, and she said, Mommy, I don't know what to do. I am so nervous. And mother said, let me give you some advice. She said, there are three things you need to remember on your wedding day. The first thing I want you to do is to focus on the aisle. I know you'll be walking down the aisle. People will be looking at you. They'll be taking pictures with their cell phones. Hopefully, no one did that today. Um, and so don't worry, J just focus on walking down the aisle with your dad. And she said, okay, the aisle, good. Then the altar, that's where the, 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 the pastor will be standing, that's where your groom will be. So you focus on the aisle, then your destination is the altar. She said, okay. And the third thing is at the beginning of your service, you're going to have a hymn. There is beauty all around. No, well, right? And so those three things, you focus on walking down the aisle, you get to the altar, and then by the time you sing the hymn, you can relax a little bit. And so she said, okay, I'm going to keep that in mind. And so on the day of the wedding, as she was marching down the aisle, the people who were sitting next to the aisle could hear her repeating those three words to herself. I'll alter him. I'll alter him. I'll alter him. And they smiled to themselves because they knew that there are some brides whose goal is to alter or change the groom. You, Sobi, will not and cannot alter Chad. Chad, you cannot alter Sobi. Keeping a healthy marriage is the most important thing for you. And so let me share three important ingredients that you need for a healthy marriage. Number one, be proactive. To be proactive means that before problems come, you have already thought about how am I going to deal with this when it comes. 
You don't wait for it to come and scratch your head and figure out how are we going to do this. Your new goal, your new project is to learn as much about one another as you can. You need to be studying this woman, Chad. I know you started already. You need to study her. You need to find out what she likes, what she does not like. Sobi, this is your new goal. Finding out who Chad really is and finding out what his dislikes are and what really makes him happy. You know, couples are often told that they need to know each other's love language. And there are five love languages, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, and physical touch. If Chad's love language is physical touch, it means that he's gonna like lots of hugs and kisses. That's what's gonna make him happy in this marriage. If you think that your ability to show love to him is by acts of service, it doesn't matter how clean the house is kept. It doesn't matter how clean the clothes are and how many dishes are washed. Chad will not really feel the love unless you speak his language. Chad, if, so, if Sobe's love language are words of affirmation, she loves to hear your sweet voice whispering sweet nothings to her and telling her how beautiful and wonderful she is. You could bring flowers from now until next week unless you tell her how you feel. They will not mean as much as you think they do. Study one another. Be proactive. You know, in 1 Corinthians 13, the Bible says that love is patient, is kind, it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it isn't proud, it's not rude, and it's not self-seeking. Number two, put first things first. Get your priorities in order. I noticed that when you came up with your dad, Sobi, that when Chad met you, dad kissed you. That was a kiss of goodbye. And Chad shook his hand, which is, I'm taking over now, and hugged him, which meant, yes, she is your girl, she's your baby girl, but I'm her new priority now. This doesn't mean that you're abandoning your family. This doesn't mean that you're disregarding your people. It simply means that when God said that a man should leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, God is saying, new priority. New priority. Sometimes parents make children their priorities. But as many of us have found out, as I found out three years ago, my daughter who I love dearly, that's my baby. Oh, I love that girl. And one day, she saw a guy and he saw her. And now she's gone. I, I used to be the priority, Pastor, but she has another priority. It, that's what God intended. And so you need to make each other your priority. And number three, sharpen the saw. You cannot keep using an instrument without sharpening it or it will get dull and it will become ineffective. Your marriage needs to be sharpened. It means that spiritually you need to be going to church. Spiritually you need to be praying together. Spiritually, you need to be studying God's word together. That's what's going to keep you sharp. It also means that every now and then, you're going to have to leave all the work and church responsibilities behind and go spend a weekend in the Poconos or go down to the Jersey Shore. Just spend 
time for one another. That's called sharpening the saw. If you don't spend time with one another, your marriage is going to suffer. And so today, continue to do these three things. Be proactive. Don't wait until problems come. Study each other. Put first things first. You are now each other's priority, and God is above you. He is the only person that you should put above one another. And number three, sharpen the saw. Keep your love alive. Keep your spiritual life intact. And I guarantee you, if you do that, this marriage is going to be an example to those who are looking and listening. And God is going to bless you with many happy years. Congratulations. God bless you, Chad. God bless you, Sylvie. Amen. Amen. Who giveth this strikingly beautiful woman to be married to this disturbingly handsome young man? Oh. Yes. Give him a hand. Yeah. Dr. Harrigan, I want you to know, sir, this is one of my happiest days. And the reason why is because I blessed this young lady as a baby. Yeah. And, and I'm here today to officiate in her wedding. You don't know how beautiful it is to do something like this. And I'm 80 years old, and I'm retiring at the end of the year. And you have blessed me in allowing me to become a part of your wedding party. I have married my daughter. And it's only because she's my daughter why I feel a little more happy. Because you came to my church and said to me, you, you blessed me 30 years ago. Please officiate in my wedding. I felt so good from then. And I wanted to be healthy, but somehow I hurt my back. I have on a brace. I hope I'm not disappointing you, but I'm so happy to be here. And for you, sir, I'm going to tell you something at the end of this wedding, how to handle her, <laughs> and that will help you. I would like you both to hold hands and look into each other's face. Hold hands and repeat after me, and Dr. Harrigan, let them repeat. Before our families, both of you repeat. Before, Before our, our families, our friends, our friends, the church, the church, the community, the community, the world, the world, the holy angels, the holy angels, and the Godhead. And the Godhead. I ask you to be my constant companion. I ask you to be my constant companion. And wife, you say husband, <laughs> and wife, and husband, and wife, through the rest of my life through the rest of my life sweetheart sweetheart i am becoming i am becoming and always will be your husband and always will be your wife i join you for joy i join you for joy for love for love for life for life i join you Join you. So we can live together, so we can live together. And, grow together. and grow together and to be near, and to be near. The, Almighty God. the Almighty God. I join you, I join you. To, be with you always. to be with you always. Honey, Honey I promise you love. 
I promise you love. I promise you respect. I promise you respect. I promise you freedom. I promise you freedom. I promise you encouragement. I promise you encouragement. I promise you friendship. I promise you friendship. I promise you me. I promise you me. All of me, darling. All of me, darling. I promise you. I promise you. All the help necessary. All the help necessary. To develop yourself. To develop yourself. As a person. As a person. Here. Here. And now, and now, and as the person, and as the person, God wants us to be. God wants us to be. I promise to stand by you, darling. I promise to stand by you, and to move with you, and to move with you through life, through life, no matter how hard it may be. No matter how hard it may be. I promise to ever, I promise to ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and forever, forever, be your husband. I promise to love you I promise to love from, you. Here to from here to eternity. But darling, but darling most, of all, most of all, I promise you Jesus. I promise you Jesus. For with Jesus in the family, in the family we will have a happy home. Please be patient with me, love. Please be patient with me, love. Please try to understand me, darling. Please try to understand me, darling. Because God is not true with me yet. Because God is not true with me yet. Will you do that for me, my dear? Will you do that for me, my dear? Will you lean on me? Will you lean on me? As we lean together. As we lean together. On Jesus. On Jesus. And as we struggle together. As we struggle and as we succeed together, and as we triumph together, until we are saved in the kingdom of Almighty God. In the kingdom of Almighty God. Oh Lord, oh Lord, help me to be conscious of it. Help me to be conscious of it. Help me. Help me to be conscious of it. To be conscious of it. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus let not this consciousness, not this consciousness pass, me pass me by, by or come to me, come to me tardily, tardily that I may miss that I may miss what you have in life, what you have in life for, me for me and for my husband. And for my wife. And for my husband. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Help me. Help me. To be conscious of it. To be conscious of it. Help me. Help me. To be conscious. To be conscious of it. Amen. Amen. As we stand here in front of our family and friends, Sobi, I can't help but remember the first time I saw you in that black dress on January 13, 2018 at NEC Youth Convention. I said to myself, wow, that girl will never give me a chance to talk to her. But boy, was I wrong. Although our relationship started as a friendship, my feelings and attraction for you grew stronger as I've gotten to know you. To have someone as special as you out of all the people in the world is one I never imagined. I truly believed in my heart that God brought us together. There's so many things that I love about you that I cannot put one above the other. I love to make you laugh just to see the joy and smile on your beautiful face. I love your beautiful natural hair as my hair begins to fade away. I know when I'm feeling sad about my hair, I can always run my fingers through yours. I love that your eyes are like stars that sparkle in the skies, bringing joy to my heart. 
everyone around you knows that you truly love and care for your family and friends. You are very generous, intelligent, supportive, and most importantly, devoted to God. On behalf of everyone here, you are loved more than any metaphor can ever express. In faith, honesty, and love, I take you to be my wedded wife to share with you God's plan for our lives together, united in Christ. And with God's help to strengthen and guide me, I'll be a strong spiritual leader for us in our life. I promise to value you in my life as a precious gift. I look forward to raising our family and building our relationship under the care and guidance of God. I promise to unclog the tub, even though you are the only one of us with hair. <laughs> Today, we will build a formidable team for life, and I thank you for standing here with me. Nikeb Chad Lorenzen, where do I begin, baby? <laughs> From the moment we locked eyes, I knew you were different. I knew that you were going to be in my life for a long time. You see me. You show up as your authentic self every day. You came into my life at exactly the right time, when I was not ready, and yet, when I needed your love the most. I love you dearly for all that you are. I am amazed by your inquisitive mind and tickled by your sense of humor. As your wife, I promise to love you with the same determination and confidence you have given me. I vow to support you through more ups and downs. I vow to put us first and make sure we are constantly working to grow together. I vow to love you and honor our commitment when we are near and far from each other. Psalms 37, four reads, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Baby, you are the best good gift God could have sent my way. You are the person I prayed for and you were worth the wait. Today I become your wife your other half, and I cannot wait for all the blessings we will continue to experience together. I love you. Amen. You have heard the questions posed to them. You have heard them answered in the affirmative. You've even listened to them talking to each other, preparing each other for later. You didn't get that. We therefore, as ministers of Jesus Christ, called by God, blessed by his son Jesus Christ, commissioned by the Holy Spirit, licensed by the state of New York, appointed by the Northeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, do hereby pronounce both of you man and wife. What? What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. I'm going to ask you to please 
bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going to pray for them at this time. Now we are asking as we have the prayer that all of the individuals who are part of this prayer, if you can please come forward. Dad, uncles, come on. We are going to surround this couple. Come, come over on this side, right here. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we bow in your presence. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. What a beautiful thing this is. What a beautiful service this is. What a beautiful husband this is. What a strikingly beautiful wife this is. Everything is beautiful, but help them to understand that everything will not be like this because the wicked one is going to come in. So, in order for him not to change things in the name of Jesus, we ask you to surround them just as how these individuals are surrounding them and beat back the forces of hell from them. We are asking you to bless this union. From we've seen them, we have seen nothing but godliness. So let godliness prevail in their lives. Let the man understand that he is not a man until he knows the man Christ Jesus. Let the woman understand that she is not a woman until she surrenders herself first to Jesus and then to her husband. Let both of them understand that they are no more one as individuals, but they are one as man and wife in Christ Jesus. Just as how you God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one. We are going to pray for them that they will enjoy life and they will be happy. Let them know that better happiness is there even than what is being shown today. Let them know that if they put Jesus first, they will always be happy. Let them know that if they know, if they have nothing and they have Jesus, they will be happy. Let them know that they should not listen to others who bring criticism. Because others will always find something to criticize. Others will always find a plaster. Others will always find solution for other people's business but cannot find any for themselves. So do not let them go to anybody but to Jesus Christ. As the pastor puts his hand under them and over them, May you, God, with your powerful hand, surround them and scoop them up and swallow them so that the wicked one, when he comes to hurt them, he will see nobody but Jesus Christ. And he has to say, I have the wrong address. And he'll have to leave them. But let them know that this cannot happen unless they surrender to one another and surrender both of them to Jesus. It is true 
that they will have problems, but nothing is too hard for you. So solve their problems, make them healthy, bless her womb so she can have a child or two, and bless her so that she and him, he and she will bring up the children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Help him to understand that his job is not just to give children, but his job is to raise children yes. with his wife. Because you're going to come and you're going to ask for that beautiful flock. And both of them will be able to present that flock to you. I'm going to ask for two things for them. Number one, I'm going to ask you to give them heaven, the greatest thing in the universe. And number two, I'm going to ask you to give them health. Because when one has health, they can do anything on earth. But let them know that their bodies belong to you. All that they do. We are here, hundreds of us, smiling with them, talking with them. But soon we'll be gone. But one man will be with them. And that's the man Christ Jesus. And that's the only man they want in their circle. Jesus Christ. The pastor will let go of their hands soon. But when he lets go, when he let them go, let Jesus Christ take hold of their hands and walk them from here to eternity. Bless them in every way possible. Give them employment. Give them food. Give them everything they need, dear God. And let them not lack anything. And Lord, when she gets lonely, let her run to her husband. When he gets lonely, let him run to her. When they get lonely, let them run to Jesus. Thank you for hearing and blessing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We will now have a musical selection from Sister Cheryl Stone.
generations and your family and your children and their children and your children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 symbol of their unity you know the wise man says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12 that a threefold cord is not quickly broken we have already established that this is a union of two persons but there's a third person that's interwoven into this relationship and that is God himself and so they are going to have a cord braiding ceremony now which will demonstrate the fact that they are not only wrapped up with one another but they are also tied up in Jesus. Chad has to learn how to braid that baby girl's hair. This is good practice for him. Pull it tight really tight no no one is coming between you your wife your husband and jesus 
Put another knot on it, yes. Amen. Put your hands together. This is a symbol of their unity with Christ. And now they are going to take care of the legal part of the ceremony. There's a spiritual part and there's a legal part with the state of New York. And so we are going to ask the two individuals who will be signing. And while they are signing, we're going to ask Noel to please come and share a saxophone rendition for us.
Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the deed has been done. This afternoon, it gives me great pleasure, along with my colleague, Pastor Winston Stevenson, as ministers of the gospel and officiants in this wedding, we want to take this opportunity to present to the universe for the very first time the most recently married couple on planet Earth in the Western Hemisphere in the United States of America in the state of New York in the city of New York in the borough of Queens in Springfield Gardens the most recently married couple in the world Chad and Sobieski Lorenzen put your hands together Chad you now have the opportunity before the entire world to, to legally salute your bride for the very first time. Go ahead, brother. Don't be what don't look at me. They're looking at me. Now, now, um, B B Chad, we have photographers, so we don't want you to rush anything. So just take your time and do what you need to do. Now hold on. The, Pastor, no, the photographer, yeah, the photographer said that they didn't get that one. So you're going to have to do it again. Amen. Um, I'm an old man in the army. I've been married 53 years. And I want to tell you how to handle this woman. And this is the gospel according to Winston Stevenson. And this is for men only. All right? I want you to be her dry cleaning man. Dry clean and steam press her. I want it to be her carpenter. I want it to be her carpenter. Sandpaper and polish her. I want it to be her tailor. I want it to be her tailor. Make her suitable for you. I want it to be her airline. Make her feel good all over. I want it to be her accountant. Take care of business. I want it to be her chauffeur. Drive her to bed. I want it to, I want it to be her mechanic. Pull her down and fix her business. I want it to be her satellite. Fly her to the moon tonight. I want it to be her farmer. Plow her field. I want it to be her jeweler. Make her tick. I want it to be her chef, cook her goose. I want it to be her captain, anchor your ship only in her harbor. I'm going to repeat that one. I want it to be her captain, anchor your ship only in her harbor. 
I wanted to be her pilot, land and take off only on her airstrip. I wanted to be her water boy, float in her like the Niagara. I wanted to be her lawn man, cut her grass, trim her hedge, but take care of her backyard. I wanted to be her juice man, take her to your juice bar and squeeze her daily. I wanted to be her hammer, hammer her in the morning, hammer her in the noontime, hammer her in the night, hammer her all day long. Remember, hammer her when you can. I wanted to be her butterfly, deflower her daffodils, and pollinate her petals. I wanted to be her butcher. Listen to this one. I wanted to be her butcher. And if you can, manage it if you can. Every day, if you can, if you can. Have a slice of her nice life, if you can. Remember, I did say, if you can, because sometimes you think you can, but you can. <laughs> you have to walk away and leave it for another day. My brother, be everything to her, but above all, be her candle and lead her to Jesus, the light of the world. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light upon you, Chad and so, and so be, and give you peace in your heart and in your new home. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Let's put our hands together for the new bride and groom.
You look back and I look back We don't see the same thing It's time that we just let it die Oh, I can find a higher Can find a higher